to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. If you receive a transfer of 100 million naira, now listen, listen. Say amen. Why did you say amen? Listen. If I had said, if you sow a seed of one million naira, you will not fight me because sowing is spiritual, but you will not say amen for that kind of prayer, especially if you know you really have that kind of money. Lest God turns it into a, an instruction and says you should give that money true, true. Now, but I said you would receive a hundred million naira. Now watch this. Let's examine it. What is a hundred million naira? A figure written online that you can read or a piece of paper. No, they represent something that seem to draw a line through the psychological needs from security to variety to acceptance are we together to significance that is why you really want the money when you get a good job why do you suddenly the person you were saying yes sir you don't feel a need to say yes sir again and you are not afraid what changed we use different terminologies in our world level has changed you are firm uh, you know all those kinds of things you know it but i'm telling you that listen that's what you are looking for why are you angry when people forget your birthday did they kill you did they blackmail you so why are you angry over something that happens in just 24 hours why do you take it personal that after 10 years you are still angry and you transfer that anger to the children this thing is very serious because there are many of us who they gave birth to us in the midst of two people's heads being joined together you don't even know the story you just know that you arrived and met fire from both sides what is the cause of this hatred between my fam father or my family or, and you don't know and trace all of that trouble it is one of these six things i will never forgive you till jesus comes what you are trying to say is you did something that gave me a perception that was against my desire for any of these six things now when you look at me and you say apostle you're a good man i like you what are you saying you are saying either through your life or through your teachings you have been able to help me achieve this goal of being and feeling secured, creating a variety in my life. Sometimes I'm preaching and I'm very serious and yet you laugh. Why are you laughing? That one minute of variety adds spice to the thing. While I'm still serious and shouting here, you are laughing because you are enjoying what I'm saying. Variety. Amazing. The worship team they come and stand here and it is true that they are singing a song about jesus salvation the cross and still they will have to package that song using variety if they sang what they sang week before last next week by the other week they are singing it even them they'll know it's not blessing you again even if the whole song is jesus jesus lamb of god you died for me it will still not bless you because there was no variety in it why do you invite so many music ministers when is the same person they are all talking about
you want them to talk about that person in as many ways biologists and nutritionists will tell us that this food has vitamin c this one has vitamin c and yet all your body needs is vitamin c but you will want to carry the various forms of it you will not eat orange alone all the days of your life and you want to add something else even though what your body needs is just the vitamin c for instance you will still want it to come in another expression listen to me let me repeat something i said that nothing physical and nothing material in itself can and will ever give you fulfillment i i assure you on this it is the reason why we seem to make it and yet become frustrated you would think a man of god having a large membership and having the power and the anointing of god and a great grace for revelation should never have any concern in his life again unfortunately that is not so you will think a billionaire and a millionaire should never have any concern in his life again unfortunately that is not so what seekest thou please look at me my brother it is not a car you are looking for give yourself rest it is not twins or triplets you are looking for give yourself rest it is not another job you are really looking for give yourself rest i can tell you what you are looking for is a craving for security what you are looking for is a craving for dynamism and variety what you are looking for is a craving for significance and acknowledgement what you are looking for is a craving for acceptance and love what you are looking for is a craving for growth and increase and advancement what you are looking for is an honest opportunity for your life to at least count write this down all physical things that we seek all physical things that we seek are only expressions and conveyors of a deeper spiritual and psychological longing i'll take it again all physical things that we seek are only expressions and conveyors of a deeper spiritual and psychological longing through that car you hope to find something else through that marriage you hope to find something else through the increase you hope to find something else through the anointing you hope to find something else through the political position you hope to find something else do you know why i'm helping you i'm helping you with this teaching so that as you seek to have physical things around you you will have it at the back of your mind that nothing in itself that i have or ever have will give me what i'm truly looking for so you can enjoy the physical blessings by having this knowledge that if it is fulfillment i am looking for these are not the things that will give it to me that way you can become wealthy and wise you can become exceptional and wise why your wisdom comes in knowing that none of these things in themselves can give me fulfillment then you start looking for what will really give you security in a deeper way what will really give you variety in a deeper way what will really give you acceptance in a deeper way look up please can i tell you this if you don't answer this question and trust god to help you as a husband you will find yourself beating your wife every day and if they ask you why are you really beating this woman you will say she does not cook well if they probe you you too will say honestly i don't know why I will tell you you are you are hurting somebody because of something you are looking for 
and because that is the obvious scapegoat around you you will land it on the person using the guise of any story same thing with wife you can turn and say my husband is not responsible and then after you cry and you are done they say what are you really looking for and you say i don't know i can tell you what you are looking for you are looking for what money cannot give you are looking for what marriage cannot give you are looking for what employment cannot give you are looking for what entrepreneurship cannot give you are looking for what a designer cannot give you are looking for what travels across the globe cannot give genesis 37 and verse 15 please give it to us hmm. and a certain man found you rigma rolling around life and a certain man found you with a pile of enemies on your blacklist and they say what, what is all this about and he said what are you really looking for why do you have enemies everywhere you go from this company you have enemies from that company you have enemies look at oh, the kind of person i am i don't allow anybody to insult me what are you really saying i have a problem and i'm here to deal with it so the obvious is to blame anybody I can blame. Can I tell you, when you have a problem with too many people, the problem is you. Because you interpret life from the lens of your own limitation. When you have a problem in Lagos, Abuja, London, Kaduna, UK, the problem is you. Nothing physical. I remember a story of a man whose car got burned and the man killed himself I wonder what you will find out where he will find out how foolish he was by killing himself because the car got burned now I don't mean to insult you let me tell you why the man killed himself because that car burning seemed to have an impact on his mind based on the awareness that my self-worth is tied to this reality and now that that car has gone what will my family people think of me can i tell you this if you understand this message i am teaching you it will bring you permanent deliverance you will strive to be successful but you will know that there is something greater than success so you will not postpone your joy till the day you build the mansion you will start rejoicing today if they ask you why you will say i know that even my 10 years is not what will give me joy and fulfillment. No. Hmm. The narrative that most people have, and I say this respectfully, the narrative that most people have, especially in Africa, unfortunately, is a narrative that has been sold by social media, is that the moment you have money, Remember the one million thing I said, God bless you, and you shouted amen. The moment you have money, especially lots of it, your respect, your esteem, everything. You have photos of people with all kinds of priority vehicles there around, wearing designers, the latest this, and there is a craving in you. I must get it anyhow. Let me give you an advice before time. There was one who already got it before you hear what that person said vanity upon vanity now you have to understand the person who the bible says was speaking the bible did not call him a businessman the bible called him a preacher he's saying where you are hoping to get to i've already gotten there i can tell you there is nothing there in itself this is not a call to a life of mediocrity and carelessness it would challenge you to aspire to get your dreams and your goals but let me tell you sincerely as you seek to become all that god has created you to be i give you an advice because the world of a of the great is very deceptive they arrive there and then they sit and they check to see if that craving has been satisfied and they find out painfully that like a drug who that will satisfy you for a short time and you are back to yourself 
that's why they get angry so all my labor of doing this and building that i thought it would give me that sense of significance and yet it does not give you anything what then satisfies these cravings if a car cannot really do it if a house cannot really do it all of those things carry with themselves little expressions we we call them feelings it's a word that we have invented to help us relate with the kind of energy or that that sense of pleasantness that is derived as a way of checking one of these six lists again i give you a car key you rejoice because something comes out from that car a feeling that i am successful a feeling that i am not a failure and when that feeling comes that's it one day you will be tired of the same car you once rejoiced about one day you will be tired of the same phone you are now holding and rejoicing about one day you will be tired of the same hair you are wearing now that gave you joy one day you will be tired can you imagine remember during the inaugural service here in koinonia remember how we rejoice over this beautiful place the excellence the ambience now we are tired of it and we are trusting god to go to another place i visited redeemed and i saw the one kilometer by one kilometer that was built and I thought to myself, what was in Baba's heart when this came? Then they got fed up and tired of it. Then they moved to three kilometer by three kilometer. Our father in the Lord, Bishop David Oedeko, they are building the ark now. Remember, for a long time, he celebrated the 50,000 capacity seater. And one day, that thing again, he said, let's go for the ark. I can assure you by the God of heaven, if christ tarries except age and other things but if christ tarries usually and every time he blesses people he will tell you that there is even a greater one coming why am i teaching you this because i want you to be both successful and fulfilled let's define fulfillment again that it is the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity i've had the honor and the privilege by the grace of god to be around people who were diagnosed with terminal diseases or people who were they literally knew that they were on their way going i've had the honor of praying with them I've had some healed miraculously but in all fairness there are others that I prayed and I knew that probably these people their time was up and at that time listen carefully we have to borrow the mindset of a dying man to understand what fulfillment is about once you are not a dying man you cannot really comprehend the wisdom behind seeking fulfillment you have to borrow the thinking the last minute of a man who is alive who is transiting the earth there is something about that wisdom you must capture and that is what will help us tonight what does a dying man look for imagine don't be afraid just imagine that God told you right now that by 12 midnight today okay you will be afraid of going to heaven but he's coming in any case whether you are going or he's coming you people must meet because i don't want you to say i'm confessing negatively you know believers some the way we think sometimes but realistically imagine that the lord told you today that joshua selman by 11 55 you are going home question i know you have investments around the world I know you have all kinds of things. I know you plan to travel next week. I know you even plan to do a lot of things there. There's a TV interview somewhere. But what will become your point of focus with that knowledge? Just one information was passed to you that you have three more hours in this life. And that's it. Three more hours wrap up whatever you have to do you have three hours no prayer will change it 
three hours. You are not sicko, and it's not going to be accident. It will not be anything. Once it's time, God knows the many ways he will pick you so that you don't fear. But you just have three hours. Think for a moment. What are you going to do? Remember your home, your hometown is more than three hours. So don't even think of running there. Think of something wiser that you will do. Three hours. I'm about to share something else with you and then we'll pray. That's why I'm asking you this question. Do you know I will tell you this? I can give you an idea of what will happen to you. Hmm. In that moment, I give you a guarantee. Nothing else matters. Nothing else counts. I'm in the presence of my maker. Listen, when you are right there, you may think of your businesses. You may think of your investments. You may think of your certificates. You may think of your wife, you may think of your husband, you may think of your parents, you may think of your children. You may think of your future and your goals, your plans, your house under construction. You may think of the person owing you and the police case that is still pending. You will think of all of these things and yet you will be surprised that none of them at that point will be able to bring you satisfaction. Listen carefully. There is only one thing you will be looking for at that point when you stand with the consciousness that i have only three hours to live in this life there is only one thing you will look for it is called peace write it down hmm. john 14 27 the peace of god please write it down Everybody write it down. Peace when trouble blows. Jehovah sees. Jehovah knows. He's my peace. When trouble blows. Jehovah sees. Jehovah knows. Do you know? remember three hours to end your life and yet it is not another degree you want it is not another political office you want three hours it is timing by now it will be less than the three hours it is not whether you like it or not non-negotiable three hours then you will now have the wisdom to look for what you would have spent your entire life really looking for the thing you are looking for at the point of death is what you should find first in your life and have the privilege of enjoying it because I will tell you in that security in that variety in that significance in that acceptance in that sense of growth in that sense of achievement all of them are various ways of saying the same thing this is one thing you are looking for peace how come you only find it when you are hours to the end of your life whereas that is really what you need even from the start of your life and can you imagine that it is available even before you find any of these things that you can have it without a car you can have it without a child you can have it without a church and yet we ignore it but when you are about to go when every other thing fades you find out that is the real thing so when i crave for security what i am really looking for is peace hmm. when i crave for variety what i'm really looking for is peace when I crave for significance, 
what I'm really looking for is peace. When I crave for acceptance, running away from trouble, what I'm really looking for is peace. When I crave for growth, what I'm really looking for is peace. I know you won't believe it if I tell you the reason why you are running around with your CV is that you are looking for peace. You will say, Apostle, you are wrong. I'm looking for a job. <laughs> you are right in your lifetime. But back to my story, few minutes to the end of your life, you would discover that what you were really looking for was not a job. That what you are looking for is not a travel abroad or a second citizenship. When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I live my life to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great That you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and never after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life john 14 and verse 27 listen to what jesus the wise has to tell you dear one who has been given the gift of life peace i live with you my peace I give to you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I have given you something. The fear that comes as a result of lack of a job. I don't mean to get you emotional, but everybody who died in the train that was headed to Kaduna, by the time they left Abuja, they had plans. When they woke up that morning, they said, I will return back in the evening. And when I return, honey, I'm rushing down to Kaduna to do something quickly. I just want to check my building. And they did not know that they had three hours left. I know you may not see the wisdom in what I'm teaching you today. I'm not saying you will die. But I'm giving you wisdom that is greater than investments. Wisdom. Can I tell you this? It is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you find a house. It is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you have children. It is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you have money. None of those things have the power to give you peace. I can tell you. They may carry with them expressions of conveniences that may minister security, may minister variety, but security, variety, significance, love and acceptance, growth and advancement, impact and contribution are psychological ways of looking for the same thing. Peace. Jesus said, I've given it to you. I don't give you when you finish your degree. I don't give you when you finish your masters. I don't give you when you finish your PhD. I don't give you when you become a professor. I don't give you when you are 60 years. Right where you are, before you even start your journey, you can carry the peace of God. When you find a house, it's just an added advantage, but peace is there. Even if the house goes, your peace remains. 
as god grants you children you are celebrating the children and dancing but not without your peace can i tell you no matter what you lose you did not lose if what you have left is peace but no matter what you gain hear me you really lost if you lost your peace on the way many of you start with that gift of peace you throw it away to look for a wife you throw it away to look for a husband you throw it away to look for a job you throw it away to look for ministry increase at the end of it watch what you have children a name a private jet money in your account in various currencies a political position titles qualifications no peace where did you keep it and you find out that you left it in 1980 you threw it when you began your journey looking for other things and at the end of your life you will say house give me fulfillment and house says not my assignment degree give me fulfillment it is not my assignment all of them will say my assignment is only to give you success once we help you to become successful our mission is finished in your life what then gives me fulfillment hear me the only thing that can give you fulfillment in your life is the peace that comes with knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7 Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7 and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, it says, shall keep your heart and your minds. When you read the preceding verse, verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. Anxiety. Nigeria, please look at me. There is such anxiety right now. I want to make it. I want to make sure that things work. And I assure you by God, God is more interested in your success than you are even interested. The God that we serve is more determined, except that we have been given a wrong narrative that things give success and they also give fulfillment. I am here to tell you by the authority of scripture and the wisdom of those who have gone before us that the limit of everything you will ever have in your life is the realm of success. When you pass the realm of success, only one thing is qualified to pass with you, your peace. And if you throw it away, looking for the other tokens of success, a root shock will be waiting for you at the end where that line is drawn. My peace I give to you. Let me tell you this. And I submit to you by the God of heaven. I thank God for everything that he has done in my life. And I thank God for all of you and our global family who have contributed to helping this life attain some level and some measure of success. But I thank God because I learned early. Ministry is powerful. It reveals Jesus. But on his own, as an art or an occupation, does not give you peace. I can tell you. Traveling around the world, I don't care whether you go with first class, business class, private jet, it will not give you peace. The same weather will shake every plane. It doesn't matter where you are seated. The plane in its, the, the space in a first class, business class, economy, if, if the weather shakes it, the whole plane will shake. If that plane crashes, everybody there will crash. Now I'm tempted to sing it again. There are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones. Only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. One more time. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are only a shoe. Only a shoe.
write this down aside from your relationship with Jesus Christ aside from your family and aside from your assignment nothing else is a do or die affair write it down aside from your relationship with Jesus aside from your family and aside from your assignment absolutely nothing else is a do or die affair listen carefully listen carefully don't be distracted aside from your relationship with Jesus aside from your family aside from your assignment there is absolutely nothing else in this life that is a do or die why are you allowing the issue of the job to kill you? Are you that cheap to give it the power to kill you? Why are you allowing the fact that you were not recognized in an occasion? This thing happened January until now. You have developed, you are almost sick because your ego was torn. So, Those who left, who today have gone to be with the Lord. I imagine them sitting respectfully. Some of them are your loved ones. I don't mean to get too emotional. But when they sat in that train, as it started, they didn't know the clock too started. The same way you are seated here. I'm not trying to be a bearer of bad news. But you are closer today than you were in the morning. I don't care how long the time is just know that when you woke up this morning you are closer to that moment believe it cast it say in Jesus name I don't agree save journey I can assure you by the God of heaven by the time you wake up tomorrow morning among the many things that you remember remember it is minus one day to that moment So when you are fighting and dragging for your ego, let wisdom stand in between to separate you and say there is no time for this. Remember what you should not lose. Lose the business but don't lose peace. Lose whatever but don't lose peace. Huh. Remember the wisdom of a dying man. Money will not do you much at that time. It does not give fulfillment. So, as you begin your journey and as you explore everything you are trying to explore look up please there is a kind of desperation many of you are giving life that will end up hurting you it's an unnecessary desperation there are the things that matter the chiefest among them is peace tie it around you no matter what happens refuse to let your peace go and at the end of your life you will find out that peace brought you houses you will find out that peace brought you certificates but you will wave them at the gates of success and peace will escort you gallantly into the realm where only few ever get to it's called the realm of fulfillment you will stand there with joy knowing you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and whether he comes to meet you or you go to meet him you can wave earth goodbye with joy because it's the same peace that goes with you jesus said my peace africa hear me it may look like we've lost everything nigeria i know the cost of fuel the cost of diesel i know that terrorism is everywhere people have lost their homes People have loved their loved ones. And if I ask you, what do you have left? I know you will say nothing. Let me show you that in all that you lost, you really did not lose anything. Because there is something Satan wants to take. My message is to help you to protect it with all you've had. I may lose my family members, but I have peace. I may not have gotten the job yet, but I have peace. 
I may not have had ministry expansion yet, but I have peace. The gifts of the Spirit may not yet be at work in my life as a preacher, but I have peace. Someone shout peace. peace. So listen to me. Psychology and psychologists call it security and you need to be secured. They call it variety or dynamism. They call it significance, your pedigree. They call it love and acceptance, that, that craving to be handed a right hand of fellowship into circles and spheres. They call it growth and achievement. They call it impact and contribution. The master only calls it one word, peace. So, when God blesses me with a house, or when God blesses me with whatever life can offer, I enjoy it and I thank God for it. But at the back of my mind, I remind myself that none of these things, these things are expressions of the mercy and grace of God, consolations to my effective living, but never the basis for it. That the reason why my life is effective is not because of these things. The reason why my life is effective is that I will at the end of my life have the peace that comes with knowing that I spent my life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. Listen to me. Someday, very soon or later, you will have the opportunity to stand before the coffin of someone you know, someone related to you, I pray not you, at least not so. But you will have a cause to stand. Every time you stand there, let it remind you of the message of this preacher that money does not give fulfillment. Money can create an environment that gives you efficiency and redeems time. I do not downplay these things. I have taught you and will continue to teach you the principles of the kingdom. But there are many people today who have peace, but no car. They will tell you, I am a failure. They have peace, but no house. They will tell you, I am a failure. They have peace, but they've not gone abroad. They will say, I am a failure. So says the narrative of ignorant people. Come to the world of wisdom, and God tells you, no matter what you have, if peace is the foundation, you have something. No matter what you have, if you lost your peace on the way, you have nothing. You will keep submitting your prayer requests. Even before the end of the service, I'm going to pray for you and declare that all the things that need to happen in your life for all these six things to happen will happen. And provided you are engaging the word of God, remember my teaching last week, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Inevitably, you will have results in your life. However, please hear me. I have told you here in Koinonia, I stand before the God of heaven and I'm speaking to the whole world. And let me tell you sincerely, you see this work, Koinonia? I love you passionately with my heart and for as long as God grants me breath, I will keep driving and striving to give my very best. But apps, I can shut down Koinonia this night if God says so. And believe me, I will go and rest the restfulness of a successful person. Because my success is not derived in these things. Man of God, give yourself rest. This headache and high blood pressure. There are people in their 20s, their high blood pressure is as if they are cooking something inside them and their pressure is rising and going down. You ask them why they say, Kai, life, I must make it. This must make it is killing people. It's good to be excellent, to excel. But let us be careful. This is a word of caution. Of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness to the flesh. Hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commands. For this is the whole duty of man. Politicians, if you don't win election, don't kill yourself. 
I'm saying it in advance. Don't kill yourself. It is not a do or die affair. When politics becomes a do or die affair, you will do demonic things for it. Business people, it's good to prosper. But while you are in that transition building wealth, be patient and find peace. You can still smile even when your account is red. My sister, I know you are still trusting God for the child. Let the naysayers keep saying, are you a man or a woman? Don't mind them. God will soon answer them in grand style. But in the interim, do not starve yourself from sleep and say, oh God, when will you visit me? No, his peace is him with you. He's called the prince of it. Are you learning? Most times people see the enormous work that God is doing and you know they feel that ah, apostle you must be thinking your head is going left right and center I said me <laughs> you are joking you don't know me I'm busy but I'm not busy doing many things no I plan to live a successful and an effective life Give yourself rest. The real estate company will come, but not by worrying. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.